Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to my new style of YouTube videos. Today, I have another mom all the way from the USA. So it's afternoon here, and good morning to you. And good morning, Diane. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Today, um, actually, we are going to understand the journey of an older child, and we're going to call her Miss 12, um, and how Diane um, and her family have really come to understand selective mutism, and actually later in life than what we normally experience. So tell us about your experience, Diane. experience with uh, Miss 12 growing up was that at home and in comfortable setting, she was outspoken, silly, um, just a really fun loving girl. Um, when she got into school settings, even as young as preschool and kindergarten, every teacher would say she's very shy she's very quiet she doesn't engage with the other kids she sits back she watches but she doesn't join in and so this kind of um label stuck with her throughout elementary school and every year it was the same thing she's very quiet <clears throat> very well behaved which i think that's actually a key is she was quiet well behaved always did her schoolwork, did really well in school didn't cause problems but just wouldn't talk at school but it was never, nobody ever said this is a problem or this yeah. is in the way of her academically. Um, so we just thought, okay, she's, she's really well behaved at school. And at home, she was a different kid. She was funny and loud and silly. Um, so we just kind of went with it. Do you know what we say when I uh, do my training, the very first slide always says, the quiet child is the forgotten child. Definitely. And it, it's a dream for, pair, for teachers to finally have somebody sit at the back of the classroom, really quiet and really attentive. Yep. And my aim really in life is to make sure that everybody has heard about selective mutism and really break down the barriers and the myths around it's okay for your child not to say anything for a whole year. So I'm really lucky because I have teachers and um, earlier learning teachers or you know teacher teachers, they come to my trainings and they go, when I went to university, nobody ever told me about, oh, a child shouldn't really not talk. Right. <laughs> so she has gone, so you're Miss 12, went from a long time yep. and everybody kept saying she's just shy, she's just shy. Um, and then obviously she has start, she started to believe that's just what it is and deep yes. inside it she really wanted to but she couldn't right. so what what changed that you went Do you know what I think I've heard about her being shy quite a lot right it was in fifth grade really when when everything really changed for her that even within her very small social group. And, and I think in elementary school, you're just kind of lumped in with a group of kids. And those are the kids you eat with, you play with, you're, they're in your class, you don't switch classes. So they're kind of built in. In fifth grade, it changes where they switch classes, they choose where they want to sit at lunch. Um, and that was really when it went from her being shy to she was sick every day. She went to the nurse every day. She was in the bathroom at home for hours with stomach aches, with headaches. Huh. And we we went the medical route. We thought, oh my gosh, something is wrong. We're going to go to the doctor. We're going to go to the gastroenterologist. We're going to do all of these things and find out what's wrong with her. And there's nothing physically wrong with her. And that was when her pediatrician um, suggested that it might be anxiety. And from there, we started looking into getting her a therapist and getting her help that way, but it was just escalating at school where 
she was passing out at school when she was asked to perform or recite things in fifth grade they would do a lot of projects in front of the class she would go completely white pass out yeah so it was really like a flighter fight or flight response almost. absolutely such a, a yeah. big connection between the mind yes. and the body absolutely. so she possibly stopped breathing yeah enough so not enough oxygen so then she felt like you know her body then just left yes that is such it's incredible and especially because she's slightly older then you can see it because with little ones they can't even express to right. you this is how i feel for them it feels quite natural that, that being quiet is is their friend right but Diane, how did she notice that with um you know out with school with neighbors or when you went to shops or was she actually okay there she definitely got more introverted socially um i just think as she got older this the kind of expected social demands on a person she couldn't meet them so when we would be at a shop or out at a restaurant she couldn't make eye contact she couldn't say oh. she wanted a lemonade to drink she couldn't say hello to the person at the register it, she would hide behind me and at 10 years old the expectation is your child should be saying hello your child should be ordering yeah. and it kind of became even within my family you know why is it miss 12 coming down it got as bad as even within our family structure mm -hmm. if certain people were over she would stay in her room because she could not meet that expectation socially. so what happens in your state because obviously the uk and the usa are slightly different in approaching selective mutism right. um, what, would, what were the steps that um... uh, a lot of with uh, getting her into art therapy she's a really gifted artist so i thought okay this will be a great approach for her and get her comfortable um we did that for about eight months she never spoke to her therapist even once not one time so we kind of were like what do we do and and she was the one who actually uh brought up selective mutism uh with us and so we kind of went on that path we got her the diagnosis and then uh through her school we got her on a 504 plan don't call on her unless her hand is raised you know help with transitions kind of generic things like that which really weren't that helpful because she wasn't getting services with it yeah. she was getting accommodations but we weren't we didn't know how to approach how do we get her help and actually what you're mentioning which is general suggestions they work very well with younger children so don't ask the child too many questions but tend to comment um, try not to push them to speak, but just do, oh, I wonder. And that's all nice and good at the very beginning. And they're, I would say that's a, a really good foundation, but not enough for a 12-year-old right. who has now started to perceive herself as this is who I am. It's, this is me, yeah. And, you know, nobody in the school knew what selective mutism was. So I went in with, you know, packets and I made all this stuff and handed them out. And, you know, a lot of her teachers were very receptive and it was almost like a, the puzzle was coming clearer once they got that information like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, so it does that. Now I see, I understand what you're saying. Um, there were some teachers that just didn't buy into it and thought she was being, um, you know, avoidance, mm -hmm. not wanting to do her work, not wanting to yeah. participate, a bit of defiance maybe, which is the furthest thing from yeah. what this is. So it's hard when you're dealing with people who are educating your child who don't understand what she needs. Did you manage to go into a course at mm -hmm. all for, no. for you to be educated? I mean, just my own research, um, 
but I've never done a class. I think I probably read every book and <laughs> read mm. everything that I can find out about it um, and how to help her, but um, there's not a lot of resources um, that are just readily available for this. And it's, it's really discouraging. Um, at the end of sixth grade, it was very bad for her. Um, she stopped going to school for probably the last month of school. She just flat out school refusal wouldn't go. Um, we spent the summer doing more counseling, more therapy, but again, it wasn't the right counseling or therapy. Mm -hmm. Finding the right support is very hard um, and it's very expensive. Insurance here doesn't cover any program at all um, for selective mutism. So we were still doing the talk and play therapy, art therapy, but I mean, as you know, we needed to be doing exposure therapy. Yeah. This was the end of part one. I just couldn't bring myself to make this interview short enough. Diane had so much to share. Um, so be sure to follow part two. And if you've got any comments, please to comment below. Remember that you find a lot of videos like this in my YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe. I post every week and every day is a new day. Make sure that you are your own sunshine. See you next week.